Welcome, let's begin with the NCRT class 7th, the 12th chapter that talks about plants. Now in the class 6th, we have already talked about the plant, the structure of the plant. We have few questions here for you. If you are able to solve those questions, you are well set with the lecture. Else we can discuss the lecture here. So uh, the first thing that we would like to bring into notice is understanding the concept that is here. And this is a diagram that talks about the plants. So we have the the green leaves that are seen and then we have the petals which are the leaves of the flowers now this sepals and petals we have already talked about in the last class what we are trying to bring about in this class is the structure to understand better the parts within this sepals that are seen so within the sepals you have the reproductive parts that are seen so reproduction in the plants could be broadly classified in two ways one is sexual reproduction the other is asexual reproduction this happens without seeds so there is no requirement for the seeds to be present but this requires seeds so that's the basic difference between the two types of flowers that we talk about now coming on to the various methods that we talk about so let's first begin with the asexual reproduction the first common method is vegetative propagation now you would have commonly seen a rose plant rose plant usually propagates by the means of grafting so you have one one of the branches that is cut and let us put up into another soil and later on you see the rose flower so this method which is basically the asexual reproduction is classified under vegetative propagation you have budding that takes place fragmentation that takes place and spore formation so four of those processes which are part of the asexual reproduction the benefit of this all four processes are they take less time so they are time saving they create usually a replica so if i am taking the branch of a white rose it would become a white rose so replica or exact copies are usually seen with very less variations that are seen it takes less time to have the new species that is up now this vegetative propagation could take place through various ways as we said rose is a good example where we have branching similarly you have champa where you have bud in the axil that is seen now what is axil it's the point of attachment of the leaf to the node so at this point you would have the axil that would be seen and this could develop into another shoot which is known as vegetative bud now this bud could be small and later on could grow into bigger size a good example is bryophyllum bryophyllum you have leaf and on the leaf itself you have the buds that develop so you have budding that de develops on the leaf itself and therefore it's very very unique process to understand the next is on the potato uh, similar to potato you have ginger turmeric as well and on the potato you have the eyes or the nodes that are seen these are known as scars and from here you have the new plant that grows in so that's how we understand the formations from the eye or the scar the roots of the plant like in sweet potato or dahlia give rise to new plants so that's again a means of vegetative propagation sometimes the part of the plant is detached itself so let's say this is a cactus plant from this a part of the plant of the cactus is detached and is put up into a new soil you would have new cactus that would come up there so that's again one of the ways to understand the new plants so as we said they usually have the exact copies they bear fruits and flowers much more easily and vegetative propagation commonly seen examples are sugarcane potato and rose we have talked about case by case examples with roots with shrubs with leaves and with branches so that was the first category of asexual reproduction the second is budding now budding is commonly seen in the yeast so you have one cell and it slowly and gradually creates numerous ones so you have a small bud that develops and on that bud you have another buds that develop and later they become detached and develop as new plants or new species yeast is a common example fragmentation is commonly seen in algae so in plants it is seen in algae in animals it is seen in amoeba so you have one algae it would break into two algae so you have two new algae that are part of it so that's how you have new species that come up and that's the process of fragmentation the next important process is spore formation commonly if you have seen a bread mold what would happen on the bread mold you would have 
white cottony growth that would be seen on the surface. This is nothing but a fungus that originates, uh, plural of fungus is fungi, so fungi that originates onto the top of the bread. Now what is this spore formation? These spores usually propagate through air. They have a very hard shell. The idea is they can stand very high temperature and extremes of weather conditions that are there. They can live in low humidity conditions and can survive for very long time. When the conditions become favorable as on a moist bread, what we can say, what would happen is they germinate and they start to germinate into new plants. Uh, same happens with mosses, ferns as well. So mosses, ferns, fungi usually propagate by spore formation. The next thing that we would understand is the sexual reproduction. Under sexual reproduction you have two parts the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system of the plant. Now let's talk about these separately. So we have a plant here. Now what we do is in this you can see you have the green leaves that are here which are known as have the pink petals that are seen the flower on the top and what we can see is basically the five anthers that could be seen uh, the lines that could be seen here and on the end of those lines you have the anthers and this has the filament so this line which the blue line which you can see is the filament and towards the end you have the anther this anther has pollen grains and these pollen grains are the male reproductive parts. On the other hand, if we go down, we have a female reproductive part here. And this diagram, if you visualize it, you would see that towards the center, you would have the female reproductive part. And this is basically a stigma that's on the top. You have a style and then you have the ovary that's there. And here you have the filament with the anther. This anther has the pollen grains. Now pollen grains are the male reproductive part and the stigma is a kind of sticky surface usually. So these pollens usually go on and stick onto this stigma, enter the style and move into the ovary. It's at the ovary where you have the fusion of the gametes that takes place and you have embryo formation that takes place which ultimately leads to the ovule and ovary. Later on this ovary converts into fruit and ovule converts into seed. We'll understand this in a while in detail. However, let's understand this. This parts, if both the parts, the male reproductive part and the female reproductive part, if they are present on the same, uh, same flower, you would have what is known as self-pollination. So it would be pollination on the same flower. However, in certain cases, there are unisexual flowers as we saw above. So this is an example of a unisexual flower where you only have the male reproductive part. So what would happen is you would have a cross pollination that would take place. And this cross pollination means you would have two species that are present on different flowers that would be seen. Now, once you have the ovary, that is the fruit, that develops, you would have within the ovary small ovules, usually 6 to 8 in number, they could vary, they could be less or they could be more. And these ovules later convert into, food, uh, into seed. So that's a very, very important part to understand. Now, as we said, the flowers could be unisexual or bisexual. Bisexual means they have both the male and the female uh, reproductive parts onto the same flower. And the common examples here for those are, you have mustard, rose and petunia. Uh, these are commonly asked for your MCQ questions, so you must be very well aware of the names here. Similarly, the plants which have separate male and female reproductive organs are the corn, papaya and cucumber. So those are the unisexual flowers and the bisexual flowers, the types of pollination we have already covered. Now how does these seeds that are seen from the ovules disperse? Now, as we said, for sexual reproduction, you need to have seeds. How do these seeds spread from one place to another? They could move through air. They could move through water. They could move through wind or air. That's one and the same thing. There could be jerks of the seed that could be seen or animals are another way to have propagate or move these seeds from one place to another. Now, why is it important? Let's say all the species are growing at one single location. 
there would be severe overcrowding at that place in order to relax that overcrowding or to remove the burden of that overcrowding the dispersal of seeds takes place again going to a new habitat brings the species to the new habitat as also so that's again one of the positive points and since all the species are not there at one place there is not uh, a lot of competition for sunlight water and mineral nutrients that is seen so there are various dispersal methods as we saw winged seeds so those which are moving through air are usually winged common examples are drumstick maple you have seeds of the grasses arc and then sunflower seeds they are hairy and winged so those dispersed by air those dispersing by water have spongy fibers coconut is a very classic example so what they do is they float over the water and they move from one place to another the next is dispersal by animal now these seeds are spiny they stick on to the body of the animal and when the animal moves get stuck somewhere these seeds drop off a common example is xanthium and urena so those are common flowers uh, common plants where you have seed dispersal that takes place by animal the last is burst so you have a sudden jerk and the seed burst out so when the seed burst you have scattering of the seed particles that is seen common examples are castor and balsam so these are the seeds where uh, these are the plants where you have dispersal that takes place through a jerk that is seen very very important so usually you have mcqs what is the method of seed dispersal for the following plant so the common examples that are here must be remembered uh, we have discussed the brain teaser questions uh, throughout this lecture we would be covering more lectures in the upcoming session so stay tuned have a great day ahead